Action pertaining to the development of the material body of the living entity is called karma. Karma is not eternal, whereas the living entities, material nature and time are eternal energies of the Lord. Karma means work and its results, action and reaction, and is linked to reincarnation. Renunciation of work is a recurring theme in the Bhagavad Gita. Real renunciation means to renounce the fruits of one's work. For such a worker, reactions are burned up by the fire of perfect knowledge. There are five factors of action. The place of action, the body, the performer, the soul, the various senses, the many different kinds of endeavor, and ultimately the Lord as Super Soul. Action has three motivating factors, knowledge, the object of knowledge, and the knower. The three components of action are the senses, the work, and the doer. Actions performed in accordance with scriptural injunctions are technically called karma. One has to perform the duties of his particular body in accordance with religious principles in order to achieve liberation. As a person does not hesitate to cook or take a bath, even in adverse conditions, one should follow the prescribed regulations of religious principles and rise up to the platform of knowledge. According to the three modes of material nature and the work associated with them, the four divisions of human society were created by the Lord. Through the process of sacrifice, or the biblical burnt offerings, the living entity attains heavenly goals. When the living entity's pious credit is exhausted, he descends to earth as rain and takes the form of grain. That grain is eaten by man and is transformed into semen, which then impregnates a woman. Thus, the living entity once again attains the human form. The Krishna conscious person, however, avoids such works. He takes directly to God consciousness and prepares himself to return to his spiritual origin. Promotion to the higher planets is temporary. One returns to earth when the pious results are finished. Like on a ferris wheel, one goes up and one comes back down. Krishna is the origin and master of all the demigods. They are never equal to him. Work that is performed to the best of one's ability for the satisfaction of Krishna 
is called akarma. Persons who perform such work are free from reactions, as if performing no action at all. This can be compared to a soldier who may kill, but is not judged for murder because he acts under the command of his superior officer. A transcendentalist who engages in auspicious activities, even though he may stop for some time, does not meet with destruction in this world or the next. He continues on the path and makes further progress to the supreme goal. The process of yoga is like a ladder that reaches the topmost spiritual realization. The aim of Sankhya Yoga is the analytical study of the material world. One who performs Karma Yoga is unattached to the fruits of work and works as he is obliged, thus decreasing karma. When Karma Yoga increases with knowledge and renunciation, it is called Jnana Yoga. Such a yogi knows that the goal is Krishna, but takes pleasure in mental speculation. When the Jnana Yoga increases with meditation on the Super Soul and the mind is fixed on the Lord by different physical processes, it is called Ashtanga Yoga or mysticism. When one surpasses the Ashtanga Yoga stage, and comes to the point of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, one achieves Bhakti Yoga, the ultimate stage. Bhakti Yoga is action in devotion to the Lord. At this point, one understands one's constitutional position as the Lord's eternal servant and engages in direct service to the Lord. Fundamentally immoral and impious actions performed in defiance of the scriptures are called vikarma. Such actions lead to hellish planets, lower species of life and the degradation of the soul. One must then work one's way up the evolutionary ladder to regain a human form of life. 